Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Professor Ripshita Bansal from BPS Women's University, Sonipat, Haryana. Today, we will be discussing about the module Philosophy of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay of the paper Indian Perspectives on Human Quality Development. By the end of this module, students will be able to know about Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay as a visionary, to understand Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay's philosophy of integral humanism, to learn the relevance of integral humanism in present scenario. Deen Dayal Upadhyay ji, the keen supporter of independence, brought into existence the indigenous political thoughts. His ideas and thoughts are said to be very much relevant in the forever vibrant political state of affairs of India. Dindyalji never asserted that his writings and speeches gave something new to our society. Whatever he wrote or delivered through his speeches was drawn from our nation's ancient wisdom and was based on our culture and tradition. Pandit Deen Dayal offered a philosophy of Ekadm Manav Darshan, that is, philosophy of integral humanism, aiming at illuminating the basic and all encompassing belief of total existence devoted to national rebuilding. This philosophy maintained prevalence of synthesis not only in the life of the individual but also in society and in the nation at large. Among the modern concepts like democracy and socialism, integral humanism is path breaking for its rational and ethical applications on political thought. This doctrine was at first delivered in the structure of four lectures in Mumbai during April 22 to 25 in 1965. According to him, every human being had four hierarchically planned traits of body, mind, intellect and soul. Deen Dayal Upadhyay the visionary. These traits keep in touch with four universal objectives that is calm, earth, dharm and moksha. Calm is desire, earth is wealth. Dharm is moral duties and moksha salvation. While no objective could be ignored, dharm is the essential and moksha is the ultimate objective of individuals and society. He asserted that the major problem with both capitalist and socialist philosophies is that they only consider the needs of body and mind and for this reason were based on materialistic objectives of desire and wealth. The chief purpose behind this principle is to refute the theory of egoism and to encourage the significance of family and humanity to build a complete society. He further discarded social systems in which individualism and egoism were considered supreme and powerful. On the other hand, he also rejected communism in which individualism was trodden as part of a large heartless machine. He made clear that society rather than occurring from a social agreement between individuals was completely born at its foundation itself as a natural living creature with an ultimate national soul which can be termed as ethos and its requirements of the social being paralleled those of the individuals. He concentrated on the happiness of an undivided society as his primary aim. Pandit Deel Nayal by no means claimed that his political philosophy or ideas were new. 
he rejected the concept of one size fits all he only stated it for the world so that a closer look of his philosophy can be taken this doctrine of integral humanism not only elaborates about his own ancient way of life that is based on dharma but also explains its applicability in today's life din dayal ji did not refuse the western political concepts without analyzing them his argument was that the difficulty and its resolution cannot be functional equally as it may not go well with diverse culture he only rejected the one size fits all concept pandit din dayal highlighted that politics should be for nation's sake alone and not for the individual advantage of particular persons he not only presented rational perception but also presented the ordinary thoughts that how the rational the truth seeking perceptions can be executed with devotion to our tradition with that view point he had offered the certain system to uphold the society the means of that scheme insist one's duty and voluntary support from all the contributors from the entire nation this perception was followed and practiced effectively for long period in our country he wished to adapt it again at the present socio political climate the interrelated concepts of integral humanism are democracy equality national independence and peace the bhartiya sanskriti offers the theoretical substratum on the basis of which above concepts can be practiced and cherished as the foundation of bhartiya sanskriti is integral it accepts the apparent differences in various aspects of life but also ensures the fundamental unity among them an integrated view of the whole scene in the various activities of the world the bhartiya sanskriti finds the interdependency association and unity rather than divergence denial and disagreement it has broad perspective and not a biased and narrow one hence integralism works for the welfare of everyone here we see the concept of integral humanism depicted through two pictures the integral humanism define that human's life is an incarnation of management of not only individual's body and mind but also sharing duties as well as rights from human to human individual to family family to society society to nation and nation to world so all the elements are integrated with each other figure 2 represents the concept of internal humanism where there is linkages from point 1 to point 7 but figure 1 denotes the western perspectives where there are no linkages from individual to the world characteristics of integral humanism first it talks about individual and society second holistic progress of every person third power of dharma fourth democracy fifth liberty sixth regulation of economy seven principles of progress eight following indian ideologies individual and society several ideologies of the west depict that the society and individual are different and there is an inherent conflict between both of them but the fact is that there is no such conflict between the two because the individual is the part of society 
and is also a representative of that. The society functions through him and he behaves like a chief instrument of society. Holistic progress of every person. This can be achieved through progress of Sharir, Buddhi, Man and Atma, all combined together. The four Purushas of Dharm, Arth, Kam and Moksha are interrelated with each other. However, Dharm still has prime importance over Arth and Kam for means of realizing Moksha. Power of Dharma The Dharma is one of the key features of the integral humanism. The Dharma can be applied to an individual, society and to the nation. Dharma is not religion but righteousness. The key attributes of Dharma are perpetual and irretrievable. In the continuous changing world, Dharma is the only factor that brings strength to society. According to the Indian mythology, the absolute power is vested in dharma alone. According to Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, religion means a creed or a sect and it does not mean dharma. So dharma is righteousness. Dharma Raj, the ideal state. The dharma Raj represents the ideal state. Respect and equality of all faiths and castes is an important feature of Dharm Raj. In Dharm Raj, an individual is not recognized as a ruler. Every individual has power as well as obligations towards its state. The other country's concepts of Raj are rights oriented, whereas the Indian concept of Dharm Raj is duty oriented. Therefore, there is no chance of trampling of one's rights. Also, there is no scope of negligence in duty and conflict of rights. Duties and Rights In the Dharm Raja, the citizen both have rights and duties towards their state. The citizen's rights are protected and the duty of the citizen is to guard these rights so that they can fulfill their duties which are called as dharma. Rights are the tool by which any individual fulfills his duties with a sense of belongingness. Duties and rights are interrelated. For example, to fulfill the duty of defending the country, a soldier has a right to get arms. And how these arms are used is a matter governed by dharma. Democracy Democracy is janta ka janta ke liye janta dwara shasan. Democracy has to be established not only in the political aspect but also in the economic and social fields of the country. The main features of the political democracy are that the citizens have right to elect their representative government and to be elected as such. In economic democracy, the freedom of occupation and free choice of goods and services are ensured. Social democracy provides equality of status and opportunities to all its citizens. A proper balance is to be made to ensure that all these rights complement each other and do not distract each other. Liberty Integral humanism presented by Pandit Teen Dayal also talks about the importance of freedom. For individuals as well as for society and nation, freedom is a natural requirement. In repression, there is neither satisfaction nor harmony. As stated in democracy, along with the political freedom, the economic and social freedom is also required. The state constituted by political freedom should not interfere with the natural interests of the individual and society. The economic liberty is not obstructing the man's progress 
in any positive or negative way. The social liberty is a condition in which society contributes to the individual's natural progress instead of restricting it. Similar to democracy, the liberty also is undividable. Without political freedom, it is not possible to have the economic and social freedom. Also, without economic freedom, the citizens cannot have social and political freedom. And without social freedom, economic and political freedom cannot be achieved. Hence, they all three are interrelated. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay has stated, that God has given hands to every man, but hands by themselves have a limited capacity to produce. They need the assistance of capital in the form of machines. Regulation of economy. The regulation of economy is one of the criteria for ideal state to ensure required production, distribution and consumption of wealth it is essential to have regulation of the economy. To ensure the proper distribution, a heavy responsibility lies on the state and on the nation. But to have control on entire production in the state would lead to centralization of the economic and political power. Hence, the state should have the role to plan, direct, regulate and control the economic effort by individuals and society. Only in few specific areas and situations should accept the accountability of ownership and management as well. Desire of Wealth In desire of earth, the dharm suffers. Also by its influence, the dharm suffers. In both the situations, the economic independence is compromised. This applies to the individual as well as the society. Attachment to the wealth is lack of dharma regulated desire. It develops economic disparities in society, cause inflation and devaluation. Such excesses undermine humaneness and finally leads to a dharma. Possession of property. The issue of possession of property is very critical. Some people think that their right to property is complete. Whereas some people think that all the property belongs to the God and man is only the trustee of the same. However, the trusteeship concept is admirable, but in practice, it is important to identify the regulations and limitations which should guide the trustee's behavior. The concept of property arises from freedom to consume what one has earned and saved. The natural tendency is not to consume entire earnings but to save as well. Any action of man is associated with the fruits thereof. Above all, the property cannot be given away because it gives an individual a sense of dignity, safety and pleasure. Strong economic system. The self-centric desire to acquire more and more wealth develops unfair competition in the society. This is not Bharatiya philosophy. Socialism developed to solve the problems created by capitalism, although both capitalism and socialism differ in their concept of property, both lead to the centralization of wealth and develop monopolization. So a common man is neglected under both. It is important in today's time to develop a system in which man's own initiative remains unhindered. So, there should be decentralized economy. Decentralized economy. Centralization is the opponent of democracy and freedom. 
for the development of individual and societal and economic power should be decentralized. The new inventions in the field of science and technology should be centralized and a common man should get the benefit of the same. The small scale and medium scale industries should be encouraged and should be the basis of the Indian economy. The decentralization is essential for the development of integral humanism. Here in this picture we can see that in centralization the power is at the center. In decentralization its power is di dispersed to the common man and everyone. Principle of progress. The society is responsible for the upkeep, development and progress of every newborn child. He should be provided equal education which will help him for the self-development and later he must contribute to the well-being of the society as a responsible citizen. Also, the society should be responsible for the employment, leisure and living of all individuals. Therefore, right to education, living, employment, welfare and security should be accepted as the fundamental rights of the citizen in a societal format. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay was of the opinion that economics, political principles, social norms, etc. should be based on Indian ideologies, having the values such as respect, patriotism, sacrifice, purpose, service, dedication, responsibility, civic sense, innovation, hope, forgiveness, patience, etc. In most of the situations of life, we follow the Western ideologies. Even political parties do so, but they fail to understand the uniqueness of Bharat. The principles of command and ruling are different in Bharat as compared to Western countries. Such politicians cannot fulfill the aspirations of Indian citizens. Pandit Deen Dayalji was of the view that as an Indian, we have to understand the dynamism and values of Bharatiya Sanskriti. Many malpractices prevailing in our Indian society such as untouchability, caste discrimination, gender biases, dowry, etc. are signs of ill mind and deterioration. Many great people of India inspired by Bharatiya Sanskriti fought with such evils. But even after efforts, all these evils have been growing with times and this is due to incapability of society to fight and adjust with the times. We need to rethink and rebuild our nation by fighting and destroying such evils. It is said when the roots are healthy it bears good fruits. Similarly, if the ideology of our society is based on the equality and the quality development of individuals then it will bear the fruits of prosperity and happiness. Relevance of Integral Humanism The philosophy of Integral Humanism is deep rooted in Indian ethos and culture. It is firmly based on ancient Indian values. This philosophy is not only relevant in politics but also in various areas of our lives. For example, like in social, economic and cultural areas of our nation. Pandit Deen Dayal did an in-depth study of many theories in the social, political and economic spheres and their negative impact on different nations. This made him think about making India's own system according to the Indian way of life, which may work as, a, as an answer to contemporary problems. 
Integral Humanism, the way of Indian lifestyle. India also had its identity as Hindustan and so this land is also called as Hindu Rashtra. This Rashtra speaks about following the age old dharma while performing any act of day to day life. While explaining the philosophy of integral humanism, Pandit Deen Dayal used the phrases like our ancient nation, our idea of glorious life, the philosophy of life here developed through the ages, national self-respect and national character. These phrases or expressions entail the path of his thoughts and philosophy which stresses for national reawakening and cultural unity. The picture shows a beautiful depiction of the concept of integral humanism, whereby from the smallest unit of individual to the world at large, everybody is connected. So, integral humanism may be the best way. Integral humanism can be the best way. Integral humanism gives a balanced approach of both Indian and Western ideologies. It further shows the path of progress and growth which leads a person towards high level of thought, experience, achievement and quality development. It is essential to strive for strength and material progress also, which will aid in developing the national health and contributing to the advancement of the world instead of being a burden on it. Thus, integral humanism reflects the various features of Bharatiya Sanskriti that is our Indian culture that is full of virtues like inspiration, unshakable liveliness and having a balanced approach. This is the ultimate idea which determines our direction for the future tasks if implemented and brought into practice. Finally, integral humanism is a program based on practicality. It helps in the achievement of goals and leads to the quality development of each and every individual. So students, let's now summarize what we have studied in this module. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, the visionary try to find the solution for arising problems and conflicts in the political and social scenario of India. For this, he reflected back to the age-old lessons from our own scriptures, culture and traditions. Furthermore, he mainly and undoubtedly understood a philosophy which was evolved based on certain conditions and situations across the world. He clarified that the conditions, situations and circumstances were not similar for all the nations at every time. In this way, one solution, idea or philosophy cannot be applied practically to other nations problems. This was the time when Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay elaborated upon the philosophy of integral humanism. His philosophy is based on four purushars of dharm, earth, kaam and moksha. He wished to implement his ideas and also wanted that the ordinary folk or the common man should also follow this for the betterment of their lives. Pandit Deen Dayal ideas of integral humanism are very much relevant in the current scenario of the 21st century. These ideas not only can provide the way out to some of the difficult problems of our country, but also lead us towards the quality development of each and every individual. Thank you.